Welcome aboard. I'm Captain Wayne Canning, Master Boat Builder and Marine Surveyor. Today I'm back on board of Friends Endeavor 32. We've been uh, working on fixing some leaks around the port lights and in the process I discovered that there's a leak coming from above one of the port lights, not the port light itself. So we're going to investigate that a little bit. My suspicion is it's coming from a center deck hatch. What I'm going to do is try to pin that down before we go ahead and tear the hatch off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a ultrasonic leak detector, which is basically a little transmitter that sends out ultrasonic sound. And I have a receiver with a wand on it and some headphones. I'll stick the little transmitter inside the boat, close the boat up, and then I'll go outside with my headphones on and I'll use the wand and point around on the deck in different areas to see if I can hear the ultrasonic sound leaking out of the boat. This can be a great way to find small leaks, but it's not 100% guaranteed. Part of the problem with the ultrasonic leak detectors is if you've had a recent rain and there's moisture in the leak, it can plug up the leak and not allow the sound in. But we're going to give it a go here today. Um, hopefully we'll be able to pin down where this is coming from. I'm going to set the little transmitter right underneath the main hatch, which as you can see I'm standing underneath. Then I'm going to go outside and check all around the hatch. Let's see what we can find out. The wand is used to locate high frequency sound leaking through the hatch just like water would leak through the hatch. Here I can note that each back corner seems to be leaking, so we'll look at that closer. As we could tell from the ultrasonic leak detector, it appeared that we had some leaks in uh, these two aft corners. And it actually shows a little bit. You can see a little bit of water damage here. You can see a fairly good gap up there. This side, which was showing a leak, doesn't look quite as bad. It's hard to tell sometimes because this little bit of this water damage here can be from condensation. So it can be a little bit confusing. But we do see some dry areas in there where there's not a lot of caulk uh, gushing out here. This should all be filled with sealant if it were a really good installation job. You can see some of that sealant in here, and, and this is a better job. And you're also not seeing quite so much signs of water damage back here. This whole back edge came out good with the ultrasonic test, is fairly well sealed. But the forward edge that appeared to be have the sound coming through definitely does not have as much sealant in there. So we're going to go ahead and pull the hatch and reseal it. First thing we're going to do is go ahead and remove the hinge pin here so that we can take the top lens and frame off. That will give us good access to all these screws and just get that out of our way. you can see this you can see how dry and crumbly this sealant has become as I've removed the fasteners from this thing you can see it is just lifting off I did not have to pry that off at all this hatch is just falling off of here although the sealant failed completely in some areas in other areas it remained firmly attached this is fairly typical of sealant failures and another reason it can be difficult to troubleshoot and find the leak areas. This is also why you should avoid the use of adhesive sealants like the polyurethane type sealants. Okay, at this point it should be plainly clear to see why this was leaking and how the sealant has failed. The sealant is all dried out. We're very close to the corner here and it, they originally filled it in but it broke loose from there. And you can just see how the aluminum is corroded under here. 
and this sealant really was not sticking at all so this one's way overdue to be resealed all right next we're going to go ahead and use a uh, sharp chisel to go ahead and clear off the old sealant from here we want to be careful we don't cut into the wood too much there's really not much left on here to be honest with you After the bulk of the old sealant has been removed with the chisel, I'll then remove the remainder with the small mushroom grinder. Lastly, I'll do a little detailed cleaning with the chisel where the grinder couldn't get. Next, I'll clean all the old sealant off of the hatch frame itself. As we can see here, the corners have kind of opened up and hopefully you can see there's a little bit of a hollow underneath there where the wood's rotted out a little bit. We probably should be going ahead and replacing this wood trim, but unfortunately we're working on a budget. So we really cannot afford to do that right now. We may end up having to do this on the forward hatch as well. So I'm just going to uh, fill that void in there. I've, I've dug out the bad wood, I'm drying it out. And I'm going to fill that void with caulk and completely seal that up. If this were my own boat and labor weren't an issue, I think I'd go ahead and replace the trim. These miter joints here are really a poor design on boats. The proper joint to use here would be just a straight butt joint. The reason is the wood wants to expand and contract. And with a miter joint, as it expands and contracts, it opens up the joint. But with a straight joint, the wood has room to expand outward. So it just tends to be a little bit better of a joint. Okay, here I'm just gonna clear the old caulk out of these screws. Flip it over. caulking down. I'm going to go ahead and clean it with a little acetone, clean the frame. I did around the wood already, but it's good to clean the frame too. The first thing I'm going to do is put in a nice heavy filler bead in here. I'm going to stay below the top of this. I'm just going to fill that all in so that when I put the final bead of caulk in there it won't, it won't all fall in as I push the hatch down. I'm also going to pump these corners as full caulk as I can get them. time to put in the sealing layer of caulk. <clears throat> put a nice heavy bead on here. And particularly in this corner, I'm going to fill this really good. Once again, I'm using the uh, dowel 795 silicone sealant. This is a pretty good sealant and I believe will work well in this situation. Now we'll set the frame back on there. Ease that right down. Get 
get a couple of screws started in each corner to get everything all nicely lined up. flexible putty knife to cut this excess caulking off. Just like that. And because silicone skims over fairly quickly, I'm going to do a small area at a time and then just wipe it down real quick with some denatured alcohol. silicone outside you want to move kind of quickly because it does tend to film over fairly quickly <clears throat> with the cleanup complete it's time to reinstall the lens Finally, I'm going to reseal around the edge of the wood trim. Although it did not appear to be leaking around here, the sealant did not look very good. So I'll start by scraping out the old sealant before putting in a new beauty bead, as we call it. Dragging the chisel back in a corner, you can see, just by dropping that corner in there, you can see I'm opening up a bit of a groove in order to apply a little bit of bead of caulk in there. I don't think this is leaking really bad, but I just want to clean it up a bit. Next I'm going to add a bead of caulk in along here where I've cleared out. I'm using uh, paintable silicone. I've had pretty good results with this. It's a silicone hybrid, so it's not a pure silicone, and it will take paint if you need to. Um, I've used it on my own boat for a couple of years now, and have had pretty good results with weather resistance. And this isn't a particularly critical caulk line, so I think this stuff will work just fine for this. It not only will seal that little bit of a crack, but also give a nice appearance. business we often call this a beauty bead. Alright, the final step is we'll just do a little smoothing with uh, alcohol. Okay, there we have it. The hatch has been completely resealed. Hopefully we won't have any more problems with leaks on this one. Like I say, I would have rather replaced wood trim around it, but because of budget, we just did what we had to do. I think it'll be fine. I think this hatch will be good for another 10, 20 years before it needs to be resealed again.